The SR520 Bridge, the longest floating bridge in the world. This 7,708-foot-long bridge floating atop pontoons crosses Lake Washington and connects Seattle and Bellevue, two of the Puget Sound region's most populous cities. Before the SR520 bridge was built, options for crossing Lake Washington were limited and commute times were long. On August 28, 1963, the new SR520 bridge, or Evergreen Point Floating Bridge as it came to be known, opened to traffic. This new four-lane bridge cut commute times in half between Bellevue and Seattle. This increase in access across Lake Washington helped spur dramatic growth in the once sleepy bedroom communities of the east side. But after 50 plus years in service, the aging SR520 floating bridge had reached the end of its design life. The 520 floating bridge was built in 1963. Uh, it was designed in the late 50s. It was based on the technology that was used on the Lacey V. Murrow Bridge, which was built in the 40s. There was no pedestrian facility to cross the bridge. And any time there was a, a disabled vehicle or breakdown, there had a dramatic impact on traffic. And we felt it was time to replace it. In the late 1990s, the region launched a major study and public discussion on ways to improve travel between Seattle and the east side. Lake Washington is somewhat unique. The geography of the lake is very deep. You have about 200 feet of water. And then you have about another 150 to 200 feet of super soft diatomaceous soils. A floating bridge, even though it's not used greatly all around the world, becomes much more applicable and realistic and economical to build. The state legislature agreed on the answer. Rebuild SR520 with a new and improved floating bridge. Our work included adding capacity for transit and HOVs. It actually added capacity for bicycle commuters and lots of uh, connections north, south, and east, west for pedestrians and bicyclists. The construction of a bridge of this scale and unique structure starts off-site with the construction of the pontoons, the large watertight concrete structures the bridge floats on. On February 12, 2011, in Aberdeen, Washington, construction began on the bridge's larger, football field-sized longitudinal pontoons, each more than 11,000 tons of concrete and steel. Meanwhile, the highway east of the bridge from the city of Medina to Interstate 405 began reconstruction in preparation of the new bridge. For the new floating bridge, construction of its massive longitudinal pontoons in Aberdeen did not come without challenges. In 2012, unexpected cracking occurred in the concrete walls of the first four pontoons built in Aberdeen. The good news is that it never endangered the safety of the bridge, but what it did do is open the reinforcing to possible water intrusion, resulting in corrosion and affecting the 75-year life. And of course, once that was discovered, we assembled, again, I think a world-class team. With pontoon construction back on track, the project's contractors proceeded with assembly of the world's longest floating bridge, 132 feet longer than the old bridge. Getting the pontoons to the bridge site was an effort all on its own. To reach Lake Washington, each pontoon had to travel through the unprotected waters of Puget Sound, through the Ballard Locks, and into the lake. By summer 2015, all of the new bridge's pontoons were connected in their final position and anchored to the lake's bottom. By that summer's end, crews finished the roadway deck that rests atop the pontoons. On April 2, 2016, Governor Jay Inslee helped officially cut the ribbon and the new SR520 floating bridge was open. More than 50,000 people visited the bridge that weekend. A fun run and bicycle ride bookended the weekend that allowed participants to explore the bridge, cut their own grand opening ribbons, enjoy food, and visit interactive exhibits. My name is Santoshi and when I was 10 years old, on April 2nd, 2016, I went to the grand opening of the longest floating bridge in the world. I really enjoyed talking to the kids. We manned different stations, the design station, the Willow Float Station. They all had really great questions and they really enjoyed the displays and uh, hopefully they understood a little more about what you can do as an engineer. And I, I was lucky I had an opportunity to join the speakers on the podium, including Governor Inslee. Um, the Muckleshoot Tribe actually did a prayer 
for the structure. I thought that was that was a moment for me. We got to explore all sorts of new things. We went to each and every booth. There were six booths in total. So it was pretty cool to actually have a celebration. We didn't really know how many people would show up. So I was really very pleased with just the massive turnout. I mean, there were thousands of people out there. So then I realized that there's a lot more to this bridge than I thought, and engineering is way more harder than I expected. Still ahead is completing the highway improvements west of the bridge all the way to Interstate 5 in Seattle. The rest of the West, as this project is known, will include two highway lids in Seattle's Montlake and Roanoke neighborhoods, completion of the south half of a new West Approach Bridge, replacement of the current aging bridge over Portage Bay and a second drawbridge over the Montlake Cut. Construction is set to start in 2018. Once the West is complete, the new State Route 520 bridge and corridor improvements will provide safer, more reliable travel with even better connections for all types of cross-lake travelers for the next 75 years.